Hi everyone, welcome back to Rachel's studio and I have a little treat for you guys. In today's video, I am going to share a whole session of, this is one session out of what will probably be seven sessions for this tutorial of Lit Christmas Kitty. And I still have to put in the um, wires and soften things, put in whiskers and the details. So this is not done. So stay tuned to even see if I can pull this off. In today's video, you're gonna get about a half hour's worth of what will probably be over two hours of painting time. And let's go ahead and get started. Now I think I want to work on painting negatively around this tail to establish that. So what I'm gonna do is get some clean water and I'm going to use a wide brush and just get all this wet around the tail and I'll paint negatively around it to establish the tail which is soft and fluffy so I'm just painting well into beyond the areas where I want to paint because remember wherever you put water the paint will flow so if you want to paint just in this area, you want to get this area wet and all this so that the, as the paint spreads out, it doesn't create a hard edge. And I'm painting carefully around this again, painting um, over a lot of this. And I think I'll probably do a little scrubbing here to establish the fluffy tail going up. I don't know. And remember, when you go to re-wet your painting, you need to make sure everything's perfectly dry because that sets your paint. And even look, this is thick. It's staying in place. Now it is reactivating a little and I actually think that's pretty to kind of soften this hard edge, which is not an important edge. And hard edges tell the viewer's eye, this is important. That's not important. So I don't mind softening that a little bit. And then this, I don't have reference material for this because my reference picture cuts off right here. So I'm just gonna make it up. I'm gonna go based on what's over here in the reference, which is a lot more purple than what I've painted. So I'm gonna go purple orange, I think. I'm just kind of blocking in right now. Maybe I'll get some burnt sienna. I'm just getting mess on my uh, mess off my palette that I think will work. And I assume the tail kind of goes like that. I don't know. That makes sense to me. And I'm just using burnt sienna junk that's dried on my palette. So it's about milk consistency. Milk consistency, when you tip your palette up, will bead at the bottom, but it won't run like tea consistency. And if it was milk cream consistency, it would hold its shape. See, this is about tea consistency. That's gonna run on us. But if it's milk consistency, it has less water added to the paint, which, um, And I'm just gonna blend this with these oranges. Use plenty of water. I just dipped my brush completely in the water and I don't mind if this is really wet and runny down in here because I want all these colors to really softly merge. I also want some purples. And I'm getting a hard edge. See, this is where the paint ends and I'm getting a hard edge around this light. So I'm gonna add some clear, clean water around that. And I'll be scrubbing that. That's not gonna look like that. A lot of this stuff is gonna get scrubbed. It's gonna look so different. And this is definitely an ugly stage. And it happens in a painting, especially one like this. So if you feel like your painting is looking so ugly, just keep working at it. We might not, hey, look, I, I'm not at the end of this either. I don't know if it's gonna look good. <laughs> Um, it might never look good, but it's not time to give up yet. 
notice I said yet. So even experienced artists like me go through stages where they're like, is this going to work out? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, now I'm adding clear, clean water to blend up through here. And I like this purple to offset all this orange. And also, I'm going to put drops of clear water right here in the tail to push into this. I do have a video about push technique, what I call push technique. Um, so be sure to watch that. And then while I've got all this wet, I'm going to get his whole haunches wet and work on getting the colors more accurate in here, looking carefully at my reference photo a lot. So I'm just applying clear, clean water and actually extending the boundary of where my clear, clean water goes, because I think I want to work in this area. So I'm going to get all this wet. And I'm going to get some cream consistency burnt sienna and continue to paint around this tail. where I assume the tail goes. And I bet you that'll need another coat of paint after that dries, it's probably gonna dry too light. But I at least established where my dark is. Put some drips of clear, clean water right here in the wet abutting this dark. See if I can get it to kind of... Now I'm going to get some pure cream consist consistency yellow and I'm going to establish more yellows around this light. And there's a light here that I missed. It's okay, but I didn't miss it. All right, and then there's pure yellow, really pure yellow up in here that I need to keep going and it kind of goes all the way over and there's a light right here okay and this is pretty pure yellow all the way up into here and then it kind of has an orange boundary so I'm just painting what I see. And I've got a little bit too much water in my heel, so I'm going to blot that out. Notice I pick up my paint and then I blot, and then pick up a little bit more paint just in my tip. And if I want more cream consistency, I can go in now with a blotted out brush, and now it's pretty much perfect amount, I think. And then there's an orange demarcation under where the cat is sitting isn't there. Again, painting just what I see, very cream consistency, little splotches I see of pure orange that are underneath where the cat sits in between the, the glow. Not a lot. Lots right here coming over the tail. And then it gets a little bit less intense in this area. I'm going to paint negatively around where I see what I think might be glow areas and then some of this orange glows up into his fur getting a clean clear water brush 
dipping just the tip in after squeezing it out to kind of re-wet up in here. And then there's this glow coming off as this area down into the paint, into the wet. Very cream consistency, really. While we're at it, now this area between the legs is dry, but it really, there's a bit of paint in between the legs that kind of separates the two legs nicely. So I'm gonna get that in. And I'm gonna clean out my brush, squeeze out the excess water, dip just my tip in and then do a more gentle squeeze and then just run along these boundaries to just soften that. You can also babysit, see where this is starting to come in. You can either blot this a little. You can actually can both blot and put a few little um, a few little drips of clean, clear water. I feel like, oh yeah, even in the reference, there is this demarcation of where the tail bends like that. Just really light. Got a floofy tail. All right, I think one of the things that I want to do is enhance the deep darks in the corners to enhance the look that it's really glowing. So I need to make something look like it's really glowing, it needs to be contrasted with deep, dark colors. So I'm gonna put another layer of darks in. I'll probably scrub this a lot, but I'm getting this pretty glistening and wet so that my paint will flow and create a really just gradiated look and let the water do the work instead of me doing the work. Painting around these some of these areas that I think are perfect. Let's see like this line. I probably wouldn't, shouldn't mess with that too much, but you can kind of reactivate it and kind of scrub at it to maybe get it to blend a little better. This is all a lot more glowy than what I think I have it. So I might augment some of this. Definitely get this corner darker and this corner needs to be darker I think. I'm just kind of brushing at this to kind of smooth out the color and then I'll add more. I think I'll get, I'm going to work pretty large format. If I had a bigger brush than this I would even use that. This is my three-quarter oval and I'm going to get plenty of Windsor Violet. And Burnt Sienna. I think Windsor Violet and Burnt Sienna are so pretty together. But anyway, I'm getting them pretty cream consistency. So really working over these colors that are driving my palette a lot. And just... And then, while this is wet, I'll go in with this brush that's clean and pick up some orange so that I can kind of merge the two colors together by getting red and plenty of yellow and plenty of red on my brush, cream consistency, to kind of blend into this area. 
Let me make a little bit of a, oh gosh, look at that. Look at, I went right, I was not paying attention. Brush got a little dirty from doing that, so I'm gonna reload it with cream consistency orange. I'm gonna dip just the tips, just the tips into the water to control the amount of water in my brush. So I stay cream consistency for the most part. And then I'm gonna put more of a, just putting more color in general on all this. More yellow, more orange out here in the margins, away from the lights. Just lots and lots of paint to really get this glow. Oh, this is all dry. Getting a clean, clear water brush, shaking out the water and just blending. And then I'm going to go back to my kind of purpley leading brush and get lots of purple and maybe a little burnt sienna. And just wow, this corner's dry. And then to blend, getting yet another brush. <laughs> Doesn't matter which one, to just go in with clean, clear water and kind of blend it together at the margins of where. The two colors meet but I definitely want this corner darker I'm gonna get some pretty much pure Windsor violet I'm just switching out a lot of brushes um, quickly because I just want a clean clear water brush to kind of drag this into the very wet and because it's very wet you can see my brush stroke when I make it but because it's so wet it will spread out and it'll really diffuse a lot and Really get those corners full of some Windsor Violet. And see this glow is really pretty. Down in here is gonna be more burnt sienna, cream consistency. Dip just the tip of my brush in the water here because I wanna go in and scrub at this to get cream consistency paint on my brush for these um, areas down in here around these glows. Blend this clean, clear water. And so I'm going in with clean, clear, wrung out. Kind of blend that. And also see where, what I mean by um, where your water ends, you'll get a hard edge. You don't want that, do you? No, we want soft glow. So what we're going to do is go in with a damp brush while this is still really wet and just obliterate that line by dampening all this. Now I'm going to go in with some orange, orange glow, orange glow all through here. And then in the reference, see I got dry edges. I'm just going to blend that with a clean damp brush. And right here, there's actually some burnt sienna up against this brightly lit leg that helps this leg look really brightly lit. So I'm just looking very closely at my reference again and just really paint what I see and then blend that burnt sienna out. It gets even almost a gray chocolate right up against the cat and that really helps delineate this leg, right? Didn't mean to do that. See, I got a little bit of, from a, a little tremor my hand did. I don't know what happened there, but lines in the floor here. I like that horizontal feature that the AI put in here. So I'm gonna get more cream consistency and put that in. 
and I can go in later and put more wood texture in as if he's sitting on a wood floor. While I have a super dark in my brush, I can go in and augment this as well. And then you see how I just keep adding darks to some of the aspects of the painting. Because it takes a lot to get them to uh, really pop. You just keep adding to your darks until you're happy with how they look. And this is dry brush now because it's on dry paper. I'm just gonna continue to work on things, touch things up with really watery Windsor Violet now for this area. Um, very watery tea consistency. So again, tea consistency, it drips. And this isn't really dripping, but it's, it's pretty watery. Need more water. Really tell the story of the long furs back in here that I like that. Putting some strokes in there about the length of the cat's fur right there. And if you want to loosen up some of that, you can just run through that with clean, clear water and just loosen it up a little. If you want, I'm going to get more tea consistency. This, I don't want this perfectly white. And I think all of this is going to be very lightly purple in here. So I'm just going to kind of scrumble this on to drier paper. And then I'll go back in with a little bit more deeper color here and there. This is all really purple here. Just putting a little purple. I really want to have some purple in this painting to really balance out all these oranges. This is a really pretty deep purple, almost going in with milk here. Pure Windsor Violet, Windsor Newton, Windsor Violet, very strong color. I'm just putting it in here and there, and then I'm going to blend these edges that kind of are getting a little bit of unsoftened again. Just building up delicately. With some tea consistency. Things are about down through here. I'm just blending the edges with clean, clear water. Another thing we can do is put in the ear, the reds in the ear. I love those. So I'm going to get some pretty much pure natural red for now. Um, kind of milky tea, I'd say. And just drop in these reds. And 
and pick some up around in here. Maybe drop some cream consistency orange. In here. All right? And I think that's a good place to kind of let it rest and think and sit and see what we need to do and then go from there. This is actually a painting that I started with artificial intelligence. I used Dolly 2. I wanted to paint a cat playing with glowing Christmas lights and I was playing with my cat with glowing lights and he started biting the lights. I'm like, is he gonna get electrocuted? This isn't really safe in the real world, but in a fake artificial intelligence world, it's really cool to have a cat playing with Christmas lights. So I turned to Dolly too and prompted the artificial intelligence. I did a whole video, so I will link that here. So I turned to that to generate a reference image to paint from, and I came up with this beautiful image. I'm so happy with it, and I love it, and I love a challenge. So I'd love for you to join my Patreon and come watch this painting process from beginning to end. And all right, thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial. If you would like to watch this ad free from start to finish, join my Patreon. Thank you so much to my Patreon members who are literally making my dreams come true so that I can do this, that my Patreon supports this YouTube channel. And I appreciate even your support at the $3 level where I am making some video available even to my $3 level Patreon supporters. What I've been doing lately is publishing a lot of my video footage even to my $3 Patreon members and making it available for a couple days so they can see my new video footage and then I go back in and change it back up to my higher tiers just to be fair to everybody but um, to also show my appreciation to each and every one of you and even if you're not on my Patreon Thank you so much for your likes, your subscriptions, your comments, and all of that really helps me. So thank you so much. I hope you're having a happy holiday season. And now go watercolor your world. Bye everybody. Where you can go and watch my video about artificial, 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 no, <laughs> artificial. Over two hours. <laughs> Okay, weird.